So very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I welcome all the participants uh, for this workshop on uh, machine learning for construction automation. And I welcome our uh, guest speaker, uh, Mr. A. Govind Kumar. Uh, he is presently as managing director of Seaport AI private company um, in Chennai. And he is having around uh, two decades of experience uh, in business transformation technology, that is in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, he has written few books, that is especially in uh, machine learning and uh, AI for executive management. And uh, he also received, his company has received, uh, is, has nominated as one of the top 20 AI startups in the year 2019. And uh, I especially thank uh, uh, Mr. Arch Arunjit, uh, who's arranging this uh, workshop for us. So thank you, sir, uh, for arranging this uh, workshop for uh, students. And uh, we students as well as external participants uh, today. Uh, so okay. students have been accommodated in our lab, as you say. Uh, we have installed our uh, that application in our system. So Absolutely. they will be listening and they will be doing the demo session at the end. Wonderful, wonderful. So you have also copied the files. There were three files. Yeah, yeah, three files, files, Excel files. Yes, Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay. So what do you say? Okay, thank you. So um, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, on behalf of uh, EBTS, uh, Arunji and I, you know, we are very happy to uh, have this orientation session uh, to uh, the civil engineering students, Venkateshwara uh, Engineering College. Um, see, we are very, uh, you know, Arunji and I, we are very happy to bring this session uh, for a variety of reasons. Okay, um, of course, you know, students from uh, computer science, you know, and uh, other streams like IT streams, uh, their interest level in machine learning we find is very, very high. Okay. But we are very happy to see that, you know, uh, other departments are also, you know, understanding the opportunity. Uh, just to give you the background, you know, uh, we have been doing this uh, series uh, with a few colleges, that is especially the non-computer science uh, departments. And uh, some engineering colleges, uh, especially IITs have taken the lead. They have even made machine learning a mandatory subject, even for uh, core disciplines like civil, mechanical, and electrical. Okay, we don't know whether your college, your university has already done that, right? Uh, but in the meantime, this is a good starting place because one of the things I want to emphasize uh, through this program is. Uh, you don't need to know programming, okay? That is the first and foremost thing I want to tell everyone here that you don't need to know programming to understand machine learning to, to deploy a machine learning solution relevant to your industry. The world is changing. The world has changed, right? What we are going to demonstrate uh, in this session is one such opportunity. So that is the first and foremost thing that I want to you know, emphasize before beginning the session. Some of you may be still interested in programming, right? We are not putting down programming. Please note that. The key point we are trying to share with everyone is the world has changed. You don't need to know programming to learn machine learning, right? And to grow in your career. That is the central message we want to give, right? So I want to start off with that message. And I will quickly get into, you know, uh, the crux of what we want to. Since you have all, uh, you know, installed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the slides pretty fast and then get into Power BI. We will spend more time there, okay, rather than on uh, the slides. That's really good. We're very happy to know that you guys have, you know, uh, downloaded everything, right? So where I want to start off is, uh, you know, really the industry 4.0 slide, because we are all in the midst of change. Okay. The kind of change that uh, the world has not seen before, right? In every, at the end of every industrial revolution, right? A, a new way of life came into being, new technology came into being, uh, and the world changed, right? Uh, and the core technology that drove all the, important industrial revolutions is mentioned here. So you see industry 2.0 at assembly line, electrical energy and everything, right? 
industry 3.0 is about computers and electronics right remember chips came into being industry 4.0 the core technology is machine learning right because this is the central technology that is driving i'm sure you all have learned about you know a lot of uh, uh, changes a lot of improvements that are happening so this is the core thing that we want to start off okay the key message is we are all in the midst of change right and people who succeeded eventually are people who made use of this technology who learned those technologies right if you don't don't learn machine learning you are definitely going to be uh, left behind so that is something that i want to uh, share with you as i start off okay so there are two types of artificial intelligence that you need to be aware of okay coming from this part of the country you all know right so there is one thing called strong ai and the other is called weak ai uh, we are not there yet this is what we see in movies okay where we are today we are only solving problems by detecting useful patterns and this is the dominant mode of ai today okay so uh, i think many of you have logged in from the system can i just ask what according to you is ai many of you have logged in i any of you want to share what is ai okay ai is about bringing human level intelligence into software okay so another question that can come into your mind is what is machine learning right while ai is the core technology machine learning uh, where ai is the objective machine learning is the technology that drives ai so please keep this in your mind as we go through the rest of the slides right so ai and ml uh, it's got application in different industries right uh, it is used to detect fraud in insurance it can be used to detect faces you can extract information from uh, documents it is used in healthcare right so there are a lot of uh, areas just to give you you know this example let's say i'm sure you all have either a two wheeler or a four wheeler right uh let's say you uh, uh you are talking to your friend and while taking the vehicle out you bang uh, your vehicle either two wheeler or four wheeler you know the gate or let's say an electric pole right and there is a dent in your vehicle can you log a claim to this can you log a claim to this you cannot right because it is your mistake but what do we do we go and log a claim saying you know somebody dashed the vehicle i did not see the vehicle we give all kinds of stories right so what is that it is actually a case of fraud so today insurance companies have sophisticated algorithms so that it can capture all these things so that it is changing the way the world is uh world is operating right it is changing so this is something that i want to share with you you know you be aware of this right so be careful when you are logging a claim of accidental uh, impact to your vehicle right or it is due to your mistake okay so now we have seen uh, as you can see here uh, a host of applications uh, for ai in different industries now let's get into your industry right civil and construction structural engineering right so first example that i want to talk about is project planning okay ai can help prevent cost and schedule overruns because project planning is a very complex affair requiring so many variables there are a lot of softwares that are available in the market but those software do not make use of the pattern recognition that i talked about right it is a simple straightforward software it doesn't take into account artificial intelligence or machine learning so now we have project management software that incorporates this ai ml technology and hence can prevent cost and schedule overrun what do you mean by cost and schedule overrun let's say you are the project manager in, in charge of a large uh, commercial project let's say you are building a shopping mall right you tell uh, the owners of the shopping mall that you will deliver in 2 years right 
you will deliver this project in two years. Uh, let's say it's a hundred crore project, right? You are building a huge shopping mall like uh, Phoenix Mall. You are the person in charge of it. But what happens? You deliver only in three years, and you let's say you take one twenty five crores. Is it good or not? It is obviously not good, right? Because you are supposed to finish the project in 100 crores, but you have ended up spending 125 crores. Who will bear that for your mistake? Whose mistake is it? Whose mistake is it? It is very much the mistake of you, right? The project manager, or you can say the planning manager of the site. You can't just like that tell, I'm sorry, sir, you know, something happened. People did not turn up. Material was not available. Right? Some people say that, you know, there is election, sir. We are not getting approval. Some will even blame the Ukraine war. You can give any kind of excuses. Just like the excuse you all give when you don't finish an assignment or don't submit your record, you know, record books or project uh, reports, you know, on time. Your professors, you know, may be willing to accept it, right? At best, they will cut some marks. But here, look at what is happening here. It is 25 crores. Who will bear this? Is it Phoenix management? Who will bear this cost? Why should Phoenix Mall management bear the cost of your inefficiency, of your incompetency? So project management is very, very important in a civil construction project. So project planning becomes important. And that is where AAML are making a difference. But many projects suffer due to cost and schedule overruns, right? So AI is changing the phase of the construction industry in a big way, right? You can also assess risk because a civil project is all about managing risk, okay? It could be about procurement, procurement of material. Right? It could be labor. It could be approval. It could be, you know, utility. It could be electricity. Right? It could be fuel. It can even involve accidents. We are going to see that, okay? All of these are factors, right? How are you going to manage these factors? You have to assess risks in real time, whether it is a low risk, medium risk, high risk, and take contingency plans or fallback options, right? It's like, you know, you go and write your exams, you plan for 10 important questions, right? But you also have some backups. 10 questions for which you prepare very well, five questions for which you prepare, Somewhat okay, right? So this is your backup. Right? So this is your backup and it can make a difference to the way you write your exams and come out on top. So what is happening to all of this? You are managing risks, right? So you manage risks in a project. And for this, you use sophisticated applications. You use AI and ML. You can't say that, you know, I'm, I will manage it in my head, right? I have managed many risks in life. No, that's not how an industry operates. Because here it is a matter of cost, it's a matter of lives and many other things, right? The next one is defect reduction. If, you know, you, you, know, you have built a shopping mall, but what if there are cracks in the wall? Will people accept it? People will not like it, right? It's not that 
the mall is going to come crumbling down. Not, that's not going to happen. I'm sure you will take care of that, right? But what if there are cracks, airline cracks, like what you're seeing on your screen? How will you manage it? Right? Today, it is managed with the help of AI systems. How? Images like this are fed into the AI system. An AI system will identify the cracks. Because this is visible, but not every crack is visible to the human eye, right? So that is the power of AI for you. This is based on image processing. We have something called as computer vision. Okay. Just like arithmetic operations, I can do arithmetic operations on images. I can add images. I can subtract images. Can you believe it? I can multiply images. That is, I can increase the size. I can divide, I can decrease the size of the image. I can decrease the pixels. I can decrease the intensity. I can increase the intensity. I can add images, merge images. All of this are possibilities in AI, right? So that is what we have and we are able to identify cracks, structural defects proactively, right? It is like if you have made a mistake, you have an opportunity to correct it. But if your client comes and tells you that is bad, no? Right? It's like you, you copy in an exam and you get caught. That's definitely not good, right? You realize your mistake, prepare well and avoid it. So AI system will help you do that. Right? Civil engineering sites, especially large projects, are prone to accidents. Okay, they are really prone to accidents. So you can help reduce accidents with the help of AI systems, okay, through CCTV camera. The feed from CCTV camera goes to an AI system and it will identify where, you know, if two people come close together right? It can identify and it can give alerts, right? So that accident prevention, you know, you can use it. And last but not the least, improve productivity. Productivity is important, right? How many people are there? Suppose, let's say for this 100 crore project, you have, let's say, 15,000 employees, right, who work in your site. How are you going to improve their productivity? How, what work they are going to do every day? How are you going to track it? Because if the productivity goes down, your cost will go up. We don't want that to happen. So AI can help improve productivity and thereby manage things. Lots of opportunities are there in the civil engineering industry, but the two important things, the defect reduction, right? This end, you know, planning, you know, cost and schedule overruns, right? So these are the opportunities, you know, uh, in the industry. And this is what I was telling, right? How someone like you who do not have knowledge of programming, how can you learn this wonderful subject? It is because of what is known as no code development environment. Power BI that comes from Microsoft is a no code development environment. Right? Just with few lines of code, you can achieve what a complicated program can do. Right? Just to put things in perspective, right? 20 years back, if I have to write an application like IRCTC website, I would write maybe 25,000 lines of code. Using low code, maybe I can achieve it with 5,000 lines of code. 
in in no code it is zero right so that is the potential that is there we are going to introduce that it is because of the low code environment that you know you are all able to deploy machine learning applications very easy right any questions i am going to switch to the power bi any questions on this any of you want to ask any of you want to ask anything so this is the power bi environment can you all open it i'll just give a few minutes for all of you to open it Uh, Vijay sir, is there anybody in the lab who is coordinating from the faculty side? Yeah, yes, sir, yes. So maybe you can just let us know whenever they are done, right? So yeah. Yeah. Let us know once you are ready. Yes, sir. Yeah, if everyone has opened the system. Yeah, yeah. So you can proceed, sir. Hmm. Okay. Has so everyone opened the Power BI system, sir? Yes, they have opened Govind. That's what he said. They're, they're, okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So this is the Power BI environment, right? As I said, this comes from Microsoft, right? Uh, you can bring data, you know, from any of the sources that you see here. You can also get data, you know, apart from Excel. Okay. And once you load, you know, the data will appear here. Okay. You can build visualizations and you can use any of the filters. Right. So what we are going to start off with is uh, a simple uh, application, right? A simple application uh, using which, you know, you can do forecasting because one of the important elements of planning is forecasting right it could be to identify how much quantity of uh, uh, let's say uh, brick you need sand you need right you, you need a forecast right so that is where and you, you may think that see, won't i know all this but it is not like that right when you're managing a large project you won't know everything Okay, so you need to depend on system so that it is the system that takes decision and we make use of the decision to go and do other activities. So always keep this in your mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the data, right? I'm going to click get data. See, these are the uh, sources from which, you know, I can bring the uh, data and there is also the option for more, right? See here, you know, it can be a power platform, Azure, online. It can be an access database, SQL, MySQL, Postgres SQL, right? Teradata, it can be anything, okay? Plus there are a lot of data sets that uh, Power BI itself uh, gives, okay? So for the purpose of demonstrating, what you're going to do is you're just going to do some Excel, right? So uh, we're going to uh, collect uh, some. One of the things I'm going to do is uh, the uh, data set uh, for profit, right? I'm going to click that. So you're going to see the data that appears, right? So this is the date column. And what you see here, you know, is the consumption 
uh, from 2013 onwards, right? It's five years data, six years data. So what can you do with this data? I can, I can transform or I can load, right? Let, let me briefly explain this. First, let's load, right? Okay, once you load, the data will appear here. Okay, let me just... Uh, So I have loaded the data, the date and the column, it appears here, right? The consumption. So it is the consumption that we are going to predict or forecast for our planning needs. So once you load it, this is where the data appears, right? So I'll go here. If you see here, there are some notations, right? this is sigma right so it tells that this is a numeric because i can sum it whereas i cannot sum this and this is what a, a date column okay i can also do transformation why do i transform let's click this right i can i want to do transformation because when i am loading the data right when i am loading the data the data can get corrupt some of the data can get lost you can have blank values. So in such scenarios, what are the things I can do? That is what this tells me, right? I can use this options, right? I can change, I can replace, I can fill, I can convert, I can extract, I can split column, I can format. I can even run some Python script here. I can do all of this so that I make the data ready for machine learning applications. It is like, you know, a chef, right? If you are cooking, let's say you are making biryani, right? You have to clean the stuff, right? Clean the chicken or clean the vegetables. You have to cut the leaves, you have to cut the tomato, you know, all the things. Keep all the masala ready, oil, everything ready, the uh, pan in the right uh, heating environment, every rice, everything is ready, right? And then you mix it. Then you have the, a good biryani. So similarly, I need to transform the data so that my data is ready for that biryani, that is where we are, right? So it also tells how many distinct, uh, you know, things are there. You can remove duplicates. You see this here? Let me click. I can keep the duplicates. I can remove. I can replace errors. Sometimes you get errors. So all these things are possible. So once I am done with all of that, I click this, close and apply, you know, so that my all the things get saved. Right. So this is what we have now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click create a run chart and I'm going to demonstrate. So let's click a run chart. Govin, can we just check with them whether they've loaded the file? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the file name is uh, this, right? Forecasting, yes. correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mechanical path to... consumption. Which one is it? Sir, once again, uh, can you tell me under uh, get data, which options are? See, for, uh, once you click this get data, Excel yeah. workbook, then choose the file. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, Govin, what is the name of the file they should select? It is the one that we sent for forecasting, right? What is the what is the name of the... Me mechanical path consumption. Cluster data and power system. There are three of them. Wait a minute. Uh... What are the files you said? Uh, Cluster data, mechanical paths consumption, and power systems data set. Mechanical paths consumption, you know, just got renamed. Yeah. Okay. okay. Fine. Yeah. So, yes, sir. Open, sir. You, you opened it? Yeah, yeah. What you're going to do is you're going to drag this into the x axis. And you're going to drag the Y here, right? And here we're going to choose DS. And you have the data in 
front of you. Right? Are you able to do this? So we have to load it, right? Uh, the data mechanical yes, parts. Yes, you need to load data. Yes, yes, yes. I need to click uh, okay. Uh, it shows like one of the loaded queries contained the errors, something like that. Is it, uh, can you share the screen? Oh, one second. Sir. Is it possible for you to share the screen? Or can you load yeah, the one other one file? Second. Cluster data, can you load the file? Let me see if you're okay. getting the same error. Cluster data, can you load the file? No, one second. Yeah. Follow the same set of steps, right? Come to get data. Let me also do it along with you. So we need to select a load or transform data, sir. I'm just showing you. You have just selected, right? Cluster data, open. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Click load. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if you're getting the error. Once it gets loaded, you can see the cluster here. Yeah, it's loaded, I think. Right now. Cluster yes, is loaded. This is not maybe when you're downloading, you know, something might have happened. Okay, okay. okay. But it's good, you know, at least one you have loaded. See, that is where preparing the data becomes important. Right? One thing I, I you know, we want to demonstrate through these exercises. See, dragging and dropping takes, doesn't take much time, but preparing the data, like you try to load the other file, right? The forecasting file you got some error so what you do you go understand the error why it is giving an error you go transform the data and that is a process in itself right it can happen to anyone it can happen to me also right so don't worry since you've all loaded uh, cluster let me just uh, come to cluster we will come to this in a minute okay let's park it here Click this scatter chart. All of you click it. Okay. All of you click scatter chart. Are you seeing something like this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of you are getting it. Good. Are all of you getting this age, annual income, customer ID, sex, spending score, year? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are all getting it. Good. So this is a cluster data. What we are trying to do is we want to identify clusters. It comes under what is known as unsupervised what? machine learning. Okay, a very advanced technique. We use it to identify clusters, right? Normally, we have to write uh, maybe, you know, 30 lines, 40 lines of code. Now, using Power BI, we are all going to see without writing a single line of code how to achieve the results, right? So now what we are going to do is we are going to drag age into x-axis, annual income into y-axis, okay? Then customer ID into values. Are you getting like this? One second. Yeah, take your time. You're going to drag age into X axis, annual income into Y axis, customer ID into values. Yeah, yes, sir. Right? Got it? All of you got it? Good. Now, what you're going to do is we're going to click this, okay? The three ellipses that you see here, right? More options. Click it. Click automatically find clusters. Can you all do that? Are you getting this? 
you're all getting it yes sir okay click okay are you all getting this yes sir yes. right so you have identified clusters this also tells something about our data set right these points are outliers no it is quite away from the cluster this point is an outlier this point is an outlier how am i saying from the center of the cluster it is quite far no so what would have needed 40 50 lines of python code we have done it with just a few clicks but remember what is the most important step the most important step is data preparation in fact nearly 60 70% of the time goes in preparing the data you need to clean it you need to remove the errors while loading some error will crop up right all those things will happen now i i you know here we chose auto right so let, let me just delete it okay remove i'll do this once more where i will choose the number of clusters i'm going to drag that again customer id <clears throat> i'm going to click this automatically find clusters instead of auto i'm going to indicate four or let's give five now and see what happens so i'm indicating the number of clusters you want so you have five clusters isn't that wonderful right so this is wonderful no so we have identified five clusters now for this one uh, that that i you know one question i want to ask is there any question any of you want to ask no sir yes sir see one question uh, you know i would have expected is here i am considering only two factors no age and annual income what if i want to consider spending score also can i identify clusters because then i am talking of three dimensions yes or no yes sir how will i go yes. about think right you are all you know engineering students right you, you know you of all the disciplines deal in three dimensions more than others right so here it is age and annual income two dimensions i demonstrated what if i want to include spending score can i include spending score in identifying clusters that is my question think and answer i can I include right i can include three i can include five factors also but only thing is i can't use a graph like this i will use something else that is known as a table right let's quickly do that
Yeah, just I, Govind, can I add something? Yes, yes, please go ahead. As the students just wanted to let you know, for example, if you want to use this supervised, uh, unsupervised clustering from a civil engineering perspective, so assume that you have got various construction projects, right? And you want to group the projects, similar projects based on uh, certain attributes. It could be the, the cost, it could be the profitability, it could be uh, you know if there were the schedule and all those criteria. So because you have you've got so many past projects, so what will a, a ML do, uh, clustering do is that it will try to group the projects which are of the similar attributes together. So maybe those projects with a similar cost overrun or uh, uh, profitability could be grouped into one. There could be another group of projects, there could be another group of projects. So you can group it based on the attributes. Now here we are taking age and income. So you can dis decide the attributes on which you can and you can group projects based on those specific attributes. Correct. So this, I just want to extend it from a civil engineering perspective. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks, sir. So you are all able to do this. So I am doing what three dimension. I clicked table. Then I dragged age, annual income, customer ID and spending score. Right. I have not got it here. Then what I did, I clicked this and I said, don't summarize i chose this option are you all able to do this are you all able to do this sir don't summarize uh, how do you do that sir see for example you you click this it would have chosen summarize just like you know the top option is don't summarize okay. is it right click sir just no no uh, it is the same uh, left click only just come here you you have this uh, down arrow right click this yeah okay okay sir. don't summarize you know that is you you are telling don't summarize right we want individual items So here we are visualizing, you know, rather we are doing the analysis in three dimension. We can't visualize now. So I'm merely representing in the form of a table. I can't visualize the three dimension. Done? Done? So once you have done, come here and click yeah. automatically find clusters, right? I click this more options, three ellipses, automatically find clusters. I give auto, give okay. So it mentions, it has identified just two clusters, okay only two clusters now what i can do now, with those clusters so one second sir yes yes sir it shows like number of fields exceeded number of fields exceeded what, what did you click like you said like uh, automatically find the clusters right so while I'm clicking that, uh, it shows like uh, number of fields exceeded. What you can do is you can remove all of this, whatever you have done previously. Right? You can click this, delete from model. Then you, that's how you try. Maybe you tried multiple times. You see this. This has got done multiple times, no? It has got loaded multiple times. Okay. You come here, remove delete from model, delete from model, because it will get confused, no? Because if you see here, I came here, now if I ask, it has already found clusters, automatically find clusters, see? 
number of fields exceeded because what am i doing i have done this multiple times it is getting confused are you getting the point yes 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 sir. so all you need to do is you need to remove that's all see again anything to do with all these things the trial and error is very important right you have to debug you have to go through the process right now i want to show you you know one more thing right this one that i did uh let's give a title click text box okay i put it drag it there uh sri venkateswara college of engineering civil engineering department dashboard ml dashboard okay let's make this bigger center it come to effects color choose blue we will make this white so you have a dashboard right you can create a dashboard for your department and it will get updated you know on a periodic basis you can give a title i can add additional details here i can add see this i have i have put three graphs no i can add additional things here that is space no so this is how i created the dashboard because this is a, as you saw you are able to do some you are not able to do some you got some error right so when we do this workshop you know that's what you know we are coming to we can spend time with uh, each one of you right where you are able to share your screen right we look at the screen we tell where you made the mistake so you correct it and then you are able to move forward because this is just a one hour session right so what we typically do is we do this as a uh, you know a two day three day kind of a workshop okay where we take you through the concepts because there are a lot of machine learning concepts which you have not touched i i jump straight into the tool there are a lot of machine learning concepts behind it so how do i go about it i cover all of that in the three day workshop that we are talking about right uh, arun you want to add anything uh, to that uh, yeah yeah so so what we uh, typically do is that we do this one hour workshop right and uh, then based on the interest that is generated for students who really want to take machine learning as a career those students can enroll for a 3 or 5 days workshop which is an internship based workshop what does that mean is that we do a week of workshop we give projects to the students uh, in batches uh, then the students uh, do the project over a period of 3 weeks after completion of the workshop and at the completion of fourth week we do an assessment of each and every student that means we ask each student group to make a presentation about their respective projects we give a ranking or a grade for each student and we also provide an internship certificate to the students and typically the batch size for this uh, typically it's a 30 hours workshop we do because most of the as per the nep policy uh, any internship based workshop should be at least 30 hours so we do a 30 hours workshop and we give an internship certificate for up uh, and we recommend not more than 60 students who can participate in this particular offline workshop and this workshop will be typically offline it be in the institute yeah that is what we want to share so any questions I, I think uh, can we do that forecasting thing? I think that is we missed out. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. That uh, forecasting. I'll, I'll complete that. The forecasting. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we we loaded this data. So for forecasting, what we do is you know we choose this. Come here, add additional analysis. 
forecast you click this right so how many data points we want we want 365 because the number of days right so what is this ignore the law seasonality confidence those are the things we cover in the program i click apply can you see here the forecasting is there and the upper and the lower bound is also given So this is like forecasting based on the value which I've given in the uh, correct. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. So based on the past data, data. Past data. data. Oh, yeah, based on the past data. It identifies trends, seasonality, everything, and then computes. Okay. Whether this is applicable for uh, forecasting or project data? That yeah, yeah. Any kind of forecasting you can do. Okay. Any kind of forecasting you can do. Any other thing you can do, sir, like uh, a risk analysis, something like that? Uh, yeah, we, we, you can do. You can do risk analysis. See, again, we have to go into a bit more details. We can do risk analysis with this. We can do aging analysis with this. We can do inventory analysis with this. Okay, okay. All, all of this, uh, is, you know, is possible. We can build a risk dashboard, you know, sophisticated things, everything we can do. Right, we can do regression, multiple regression, logistic regression, all of that is possible. Okay. Hmm. So that is the opportunity for us. I think what uh, Govind sir has showed is mainly on the text, but you know, as Govind sir also pointed out, you can also do image processing, for example, the defect data, if you want to find defects, so you can have past historical data of defect uh, photographs. And then through machine learning, it will try to compare with the defective part and the actual part that you have loaded, and it will tell you whether the part is defective, right? So right. that is again done through AutoML, yes, without writing any line of code. Yes, that okay. is the key point. Yeah. And one thing what uh, we want, we'll be surely highlighting in that uh, workshop is that see there could be number of students who still feel that they want to get into a programming mode, they want to follow the programming route. While there are some students who may still feel that they let me do, let me go through this no code route. So when we do the any use case, we show both the scenarios. One scenario where we are using actually doing the coding, and one scenario which we are not doing the coding. And then you see the difference in terms of the time and the effort, right? So we show both the modes so that depending on the students' liking, they can decide whether they want to go through the programming or a non-programming route. So, but, but again, the key thing is machine learning is the technology of the future. Right. right. So any questions, you would love to hear questions from students. We are almost the top of the hour, but just want to see if there are any questions. If, if there are no questions, I want to bring up, you know, one question that is usually asked right by students so one uh, thing, so, is yeah there any, any uh, job opportunities about like is there any demand for this the, 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 good good question vijay you know lots of opportunities okay right lots of opportunity that is why you know this is a technology of the future right uh we strongly encourage you to learn this and get benefited and what is the designation they will get into sir? like See, it can be data scientist, machine learning engineer, and all that, right? Business intelligence professional. Uh, those are the data analyst, business analyst, you know, those are the kind of roles that they can get into. But understand that, you know, it's not like whatever they have learned in civil engineering is going to go waste, right? You have learned core engineering. That will be made use of when you start working. So typically what will happen, Vijay sir, is that uh, if I have done four years of civil engineering, so I have gained some amount of domain knowledge through academics, right? So if I join any civil company where they're implementing AIML, right, that is the right place for students to get into. Students can also get into an IT company and IT company, uh, while there are uh, all the new uh, customers, they're asking for AutoML tools, like whatever Govind sir has said, but there are also opportunities for people to write programming and uh, 
write a program and develop the machine learning algorithm right so there are both the uh, options available yeah but obviously what is expected from a civil engineering uh, person compared to a normal computer science student is that he carries the domain knowledge so when he reads the data set right so he understands what the data set is all about he understands the parlance of that particular domain he understands the civil engineering domain right which typically a computer scientist will not have because he is a general guy he doesn't have any core uh, expertise in any particular school right so it's right. basically a combination of the tool and the domain knowledge that you gain by your academics in uh, civic engineering that gives you an upper hand when you join in, into machine learning in a civil industry does that make sense vijay sir yes sir understood sir yes any more questions uh, any more questions so any questions from the participants uh... i would like to add few more things uh, because i think since this is a knowledge sharing i mean power bi is just one of the tools which govin sir has shown there are multiple tools available in the market if you go to google Google has got its own tool called Google Teachables. Google has got its own tool called the Google Vertex AI. Amazon has got its own tool called the Amazon SageMaker. There are tools. Uh, I just yes, a few days back, one of my colleagues had done one presentation for CMR Engineering College in uh, Bangalore, Institute of Technology, and he has shown a tool called uh, Big ML. Big ML is another tool which is used is an automobile tool where you just uh, and we, where you just use the data set and it will give you the, uh, you can do the data analysis, you can do the visualization, and it will also give you the efficiency of the uh, machine learning model, how accurate this model is working. And today, uh, uh, the most of the tools, what they do, if I have a data set, right, what they will do, they will run multiple algorithms with the data set, and it will tell you which algorithm will give you the best accuracy. That is where it, the industry is going. It's not that you, you run one algorithm. It will run you multiple algorithms. And each algorithm will give its own accuracy for that data set. And then it will tell you which, which particular algorithm gives you the best results. That is where you know, it becomes so simple for a, a code engineering student. He doesn't have to do any programming. The full tool gives you all the inputs. What he, what he know, needs to know is what their data is all about. What is the data set is all about. That's what he needs to know. That's it. Yep. So lots, yeah, of nice lots of opportunities. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is that Thank you. Is it yeah, time? that's about it from us. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So Arunjit sir, is it, is it over? Or shall we? Yeah, yeah, we can. Unless there are some questions, uh, sir. I mean, if, if the students have, we are happy to take QA. I mean, there is no, there is no time definition for uh, yes. questions. QA, ask yeah, definitely. Questions. We want people to ask questions because more they ask, we get the clarity that they've understood. I mean, if somebody is uh, far away from the mic, let them come near the mic and ask questions. That's okay. So since if this your mic cannot be so. I think yeah. that's why uh, still they are not used to this kind of software and tools. No, okay, that's fine. That's uh, we'll, yeah, that we should that's try fine. again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can try it out. But do you have machine learning as one of your topics in your syllabus? Uh, no, sir. I think yeah. as we have uh, BIM actually, uh, BIM for construction projects. What is BIM? Sorry, what is BIM? IoT in civil engineering, we have. IoT, you have. Yeah, okay. yeah. There we have IoT, uh, yeah. yeah a few topics, yes. But do you, uh, do you have Python as a language, as a subject? No, they will study Python uh, in one of the semester, like one subject. And that's what I'm saying. So it is a it's a subject which is taught in one of the semesters, right? In civil engineering also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Python, yeah Python program. Ah, that's Python program. That's what. See, basically, it's, it's, Python, uh, whatever we are saying is it's all auto code. But if somebody wants to go through the programming route, he needs to know Python. That's it. If he knows yes, Python, yes. he can execute machine learning algorithm using Python by doing the coding. Yes. Sir. So both the options are available. Okay. 
Okay, okay then Ajay, yes, so you want to conclude uh, Vijay sir? Yeah, the, yeah, on behalf of the Department of Civil Engineering, PCE, I thank you, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Govind sir, for explaining about uh, the importance of machine learning and automation in construction projects and uh, uh, giving such a good uh, demonstration on uh, using Power BI tool. Uh, and I especially thank uh, Mr. Ramjit sir uh, for arranging the session for us today. And I thank our HOD for uh, arranging this workshop uh, for our students as well as faculty members. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for uh, explaining. Thank you. Thank you. So, we shall, yeah. yeah. For any doubts, I can clarify with you, sir, in future. Yes, yeah. yes, I will be in touch. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.